Hello, this is Two Things, a video footage test for the Nokia C7 shot in very bright but hazy winter sunshine. I'll come to the C7 in the main review shortly. It's also a public service announcement. Um, my web server and host for the last 15 years, UK Online, is being shut down at the end of December, so I've had to find a new home. SteveLitchfield.com is the domain, and very importantly, some of the feed addresses you've been using, if you use a podcast or a podcasting client to pick up the phone show or the phone show chat, the addresses will have to change. You have to go in, edit them. These are the new replacements. Look at the bottom of the screen here. Please adjust these, otherwise you will miss out on new shows. Um, thanks, and remember to change all your bookmarks and links and in your website or blog to stevelitchfield.com, and you won't go far wrong. Thanks very much if you've been supporting the phone show. Remember, you can win smartphones and accessories by going to this URL now. Thanks ever so much. As you saw demonstrated in my little news announcement just now, the Nokia C7 almost picks up where the N8 left off with stellar video capture, albeit with audio that's not quite so crisp. I'll cover the camera in the C7 more in a moment, but essentially it's the N8's prettier and trimmer sister. Although the screen's the same 3.5 inch anti-reflective AMOLED as on the N8, the bezel is smaller and the corner is nicely rounded. The C7 is a couple of millimetres narrower and also a couple of millimetres more thinner, thanks mainly to the lack of a, a big camera island on the back. It's Symbian 3 again, now just renamed to Symbian officially, so you effectively get all the traditional Symbian strengths. That's a multitasking, battery life, connectivity, we're talking pentaband 3G, Bluetooth 3, USB on the go, etc. Plus quite a few usability improvements over the old 5800 and N97. The main laggards in the software set are the browser and the web-based social networking system, but both of these are due a big update shortly over the air. In use, the C7 is generally pretty nice to use with the physical call and hang up buttons plus the central home button being a huge improvement over the silly single button layout on the N8. The uh, 1200 milliamp hour battery is replaceable as well. In fact, it's the same cell as on the N86 and several other older popular models, so spares should only be a fiver or so on Amazon. Battery life is, it normally uses a good day and a half though, so you may not even need these. The camera is a controversial point, being EDOF, extended depth of field, but as these samples show, this cutting edge use of tweaked optics and electronics can produce some stunningly good 8 megapixel images as long as there's enough light and as long as you don't want to shoot anything really close up. There's dual LED flash too, but hey, this is no substitute for Xenon, so don't take too many shots down the pub. The video system also uses the EDOF optics, meaning that what you shoot will be in focus all the time from 50 centimetres to infinity. Go watch the intro footage again, or to look at this footage, and note how crisp it all is. But although a digital microphone is used as on the N8, Nokia hasn't got the parameters right yet, and audio is a little subpar by N8 standards. Here's hoping they fix this in a firmware update. The loudspeaker's mono, and uh, not too bad. I was disappointed though not to see an N-series multimedia headset in the box. Those from my N86 and N97 and of course N8 are still all doing sterling service in all my other Nokia phones. There's also no TV out cable which you'd plug in there and you'll also have to buy a USB on the go cable if you want to use that as well. Um, once you're using the C7 day to day you'll find the software much the same across all the new Symbian 3 handsets from Nokia. Plenty of built-in functionality including photo and video editing, push email and a core nucopia of widgets plus the Ovi store for more. One particular note is Nokia has wisely changed the default on the auto text correction to use the corrected word rather than what you typed. Well, duh. <laughs> the C7 is currently a little overpriced. It's £300 or so. If this was at £250 SIM free, it'd be a no-brainer to recommend. All About Symbian's Rafe prefers the C7 to the N8, saying that camera apart, the C7 is overall the better phone. I'm not sure I'd go that far, but if you can pick it up for a good price and can invest in a few extra cables, it's certainly quite an attractive smartphone that, like the N8, is only going to get better with time. Pretty good. C7. No, this isn't the HTC HD7 from Show 125. This is the Android variant, the Desire HD, and it's very different in terms of impressions and usability. I was tempted to give this device its own show too, but I think viewers who aren't into large screened proto tablets might call foul. So I'm going to be as brief as is practical. I'll assume you're up to speed with what Android can do. This is the new version 2.2 with easier app updating, app installs on card, Wi-Fi tethering and more. 
all built in, plus the latest version of HTC's Sense editions. And for the first time, I'm starting to like them. HTC are getting more intelligent about how and where they add bits to the UI, thankfully. The form factor is the same 4.3 inch tablet as the HD2 and HD7, but here with an aluminium unibody wraparound shell that gives the Desire HD tremendous strength. No twisting and wobbling here. The battery cover's a bit weird and the battery kind of slides out to the side, but hey, at least you can change the battery, unlike on some recent super phones I've looked at. And you'd be advised to buy and keep a charge spare on hand anyway. A 1230 milliamp hour battery doesn't go as far as it used to with a 4.3 inch display blazing away. Expect a day of use if you're careful, certainly no longer. The bottom comes off to reveal micro SD and SIM slots. And you'll need to fill that micro SD slot too. There's no mass memory here, just a one and a half gig of system disk, which is okay. The camera glass protrudes rather dangerously, but it's mostly at risk from fingerprints. And it's, it's somewhat annoying that you have to keep cleaning it with a tissue before taking any photos. Next to the camera is an utterly weedy speaker. Could one of Nokia or Apple's engineers please go and teach HTC what a loudspeaker looks like and sounds like? The output here is, to be frank, pathetic, and the biggest showstopper for me in the whole device, whether ringing tones or navigation instructions or a video soundtrack or a podcast, you just won't be able to hear it properly. Sorry. But don't think this review is going to be another rant. I've already got the two main downsides out of the way and it's all up and up from here. The Desire HD is a gorgeous device that's full of delightful functionality at every turn. You may remember the misplaced Windows Phone 7 advertising, the phone to save us from our phones. The Desire HD is the exact opposite of this. It's a device that just cries out to be used, caressed, played with, tweaked and explored. In part, this is because there's so much functionality provided out of the box. This is the release where Android catches up and overtakes Symbian in terms of sheer capability. There are no less than 56 applications bundled by HTC, in addition to all the layered functions and links in and between applications. In fact, there's so much here that A, you'll spend most of the next year having fun fiddling and tweaking and still won't get to the bottom of the device. And B, there's even overlap within the Desire HD itself, like on a desktop. For example, HTC's Peep Twitter client, which shares data with Friendstream, a Twitter and Facebook client, and the official Twitter client for Android also bundled, which only talks to Twitter. So the initial setup of the Desire HD may involve multiple screens asking for the same login information, but you'll get there in the end. Like I say, you're not stuck for functionality or choice. Another example reader here is an ebook system powered by Cobra, one of the lesser known ebook suppliers, while the Google Reader client is called News, not to be confused with News and Weather, which is the BBC web app. Phew. Other interesting bundled software includes Flashlight here, as it sounds, and Locations, a rebadged version of Route 66 for the UK variant of the Desire HD. But I can't think many people would use it, given the excellent Google Maps for navigation. I know the latter can't use preloaded maps, but hey, look, if you haven't got connectivity where you are, then the Desire HD is basically a large brick anyway. Go get a TomTom. -tom. <laughs> HTC's virtual multi-touch keyboard is excellent on a huge screen in both portrait and landscape here, with the correction software working superbly to correct mistakes. Copy and paste is here as well, with HTC cloning the iPhone's UI here. Look out for Apple's lawyers, but no complaints from me. And I love the new global search function, which looks across your whole device for matches. Browsing the web is a core part of the raison d'etre of these tablet super phones and the Desire HD doesn't disappoint. The browser is incredibly fast and responsive, even with Flash 10 and JavaScript enabled. The best internet browsing experience I've ever had on a phone. The camera, fingerprints notwithstanding, is one of HTC's best on 8 megapixels. Snaps are a bit over-processed and the Desire HD can't compete with the Nokia N8 or Nokia N86, but it still produces pleasing photos in most light conditions, as you can see here. Focusing is unusual. Uh, when you finish moving the device around, the sensor detects it and starts the autofocus process, so it's ready for you to tap on screen to take your shot. Though touching the screen overrides this, and then you can specify a different subject. Night shots are typically blurry LED lit messes. I refer you to my previous Xenon rant. And this is test video recording in weak wind sunshine on the HTC Desire HD. Focusing is done by tapping on the point of the screen you want to focus on, and you can tap on other points as you go, as I shall demonstrate. So here, focused on the scarecrow, and then up into the distance, 
tap on the screen again, locked, and back to the scarecrow. But you have to remember to tap. The video compatibility for pre-recorded content is decent, though with no kickstand here on the back, you're probably not going to watch many films of this thing. And yes, the poor speaker and limited battery power don't help here. I'm really only scratching the surface though of what's packed into the Desire HD. There's a handy transfer wizard for getting your data across via Bluetooth from your old smartphone, whatever the make. There's a fast boot system, a laptop-like hibernation system, if I power off, that kicks in when turning off so that turning on again is sped up to around two seconds. Watch this. Turn on. One. Two. How about that? <laughs> There's the scenes, well, scene where you can construct several separate sets of home screens for different areas of your life, personal, business, plays, sorts. There are the new skins and um, themes in Nokia language. Oh, I could go on. Again, you can fiddle with this for hours. If you love Android and don't mind a weedy speaker, run, don't walk to buy the Desire HD. It's that good.